Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today I thought I'd have one of these little vlog style videos, for lack of a better term to call them. Got one box that we'll open and see what came in the mail. A few updates, a few things to look forward to. But I thought I would start off by apologizing that we were a little bit out of focus at the beginning of yesterday's video where we made the split cross or the Friedrichs cross. I know it's really annoying when you see some out of focus video and it really annoys me when I've spent three hours in the shop making a project, trying to do a good job filming it, and I get in front of the computer that evening and I find out that two or three minutes of it was out of focus. But by that time, the only recourse would be to scrap it, come back up here the next day, do, that, do at least that portion of the video again. And if it's a portion that shows some part of the project, I would have to start the project over, work up to that point, and then reshoot that part of the video. And unfortunately, I simply don't have the time to reshoot videos I've already done. It's either use the video the way it is, just accept that sometimes I get things a little out of focus due to my error entirely, or just scrap the entire video. And I really don't want to do that because the instructional information is still good, it's still valid, just a bit of an annoying fuzzy picture for a while. Although I must say I have my very own Russian troll now. Somebody decided that a foul language comment in Russian was the appropriate way to point out to me something I already knew. Sorry that happens sometimes. What's really going on is that if I use autofocus all the time, I have learned that it doesn't like hot iron. Once, it, once a piece of hot iron hits the anvil, everything that was in focus goes out. It tries to focus on something besides that hot iron. It really confuses the camera. So now I use manual focus and I focus in on the area where I plan to be forging. If I move a little bit out of that area, something may get a little bit out of focus because I have to focus on that one spot. And that means that when I come to a shot like this where I can't focus on myself because I'm on this side of the camera and the camera is six or seven feet over there, I then go back to the autofocus, which generally does a pretty good job on people especially when there's no hot iron in the picture, and this works pretty well. But yesterday morning, I forgot to change it from manual focus to autofocus. Sorry, you're just going to have to live with it. On the other hand, for some reason, my old video camera that has been in the shop now forever seemed to not do that so bad. It's, the autofocus on that seemed to work really well. Everything seemed to always be in focus. I'm really looking forward to getting that camera back. If that camera never comes back, I'll probably just have to invest in a replacement for it because it really did do a little bit better job. The camera I'm using now is a backup. It's a nice camera and it really does a pretty good job. But I did get used to the luxury of that Sony AX33 that really did a much better job. Anyways, that's enough on that subject. We've got a box to open. Let's see if there's some interesting stuff there. Yep, looks like a note. It says, punches from work. And this is from Cody B, who sent me these punches. And these are not little punches. That thing's huge. These are out of an iron worker or something similar. And it looks like this one's an inch and a sixteenth. The other one I just pulled out was bigger. That's some good sized stuff. This looks like the biggest one of the bunch is an inch and five sixteenths. Those are some big punches. Now I don't know if I have any use for a punch this big. Occasionally I might want to punch a hole and I might be able to set these up make a bolster plate for these that'll work under the hydraulic press. Got to be really careful though, because if you overstress a punch like this, the chance of chipping something or sending part of it flying across the room might be relatively high. But if I make the bolsters enough oversized and only punch hot iron and don't try to punch things cold, these might be useful just the way they are. If not, it might be another one of those mystery steels we experiment with, try and find out what they are. So it Got the initials EP on it. I assume that stands for the manufacturer. If anybody knows what that is, this one's an American punch. Of course, they're all going to be different. So if anybody knows what the steel is in those things, that one's AE. So they're all, all from different manufacturers, it looks like. But Cody, thank you for the punches. We will find something to do with these. Now getting back to the split cross, 
there has been a little bit of interest in doing a base, so I'll probably do a base. It won't be highly ornate. I usually do very simple bases for these because I want the cross to be the focal piece, not the base. But we'll do some kind of an iron base, or maybe I will do something to the cross that will allow it to be used on different bases so that you can see it on an iron base or stone base or something like that. But we'll figure that out sometime in the next week, hopefully. As far as upcoming projects, I think a month ago I said I needed to make an iron rose. I still need to do that. That will probably come up in the next week or so because it's really getting down to the time I need to get that done. I still need to make a fireman's axe, and this is a smaller size fireman's axe. And I went ahead and cut that material today, so tomorrow we'll probably get started on this. It'll probably be the next video. It'll probably go over two or three videos, and it will probably not be a strict how-to video because I've never made a fireman's axe. So it's going to be watching me try out some things and see what I can do, and hopefully I get it right the first time. If not, I'll make a second one. Now something else that I've been working on in the shop this week, and that has been working on my torch setup. I really like using a torch in the shop. It's really convenient. It gets precise heats and saves me from having to light the forge to do something that only needs a little tiny heat or a real short heat. I also prefer to weld with the torch over electric welding if I'm doing other than forge welding, that is. And over a year ago, when I set up my propane tank out in the yard, I intended to switch over to oxypropane for my torch most of the time. Although for welding, I would still prefer to use oxyacetylene. Not sure if you could even weld with oxypropane. My first attempts at it had been less than perfect. But to do that, I needed to put in another regulator. I needed to change some of the plumbing in the shop, and I just never had time to do that. But I finally got a new regulator put in that's dedicated to the propane size. It's a propane regulator. It's, I still have the acetylene tank, and then I put in another gas saver valve. These are the valves that allow me to hang my torch on the arm and that shuts the gas off automatically. There's a pilot light to relight the torch when I'm ready to go again. Really convenient, helps save gas, keeps you from having to have a burning torch in your hand if you're trying to do other things. You just hang the torch up, it goes out. It's a wonderful thing. But unfortunately, they are not interchangeable between acetylene and propane solely because the pilot lights are different. And since I want to be able to have the option of either acetylene or propane, I just added a second one that's got the pilot light set up for propane, and I took them off of the stand. When I just had one, it was mounted to this work stand. I could take it around the shop. I had 25 feet of hose between the cylinders and the stand, another 25 feet of hose between the gas saver and the torch. That's 50 feet of hose that I was trying to coil up and do something with. It was frequently laying on the floor. It was a little bit of a trip hazard. It's not good for the hoses. Really didn't like that. And after several years of using that system, I realized I never took this anywhere. I always left it over here in this corner anyways, because this vise right here is where I generally work with a torch, or I take it over to the anvil if I'm setting a rivet. So I went ahead and remounted these over here on the tool rack. It means I gotta move some tools and create more tool storage somewhere else. And that way they're, they're out of my way. I only have about six feet of hose from the cylinder to the gas savers. And I changed my torches over to 12 foot sections of hose, which is more than enough to go to the vise or the anvil. And if I need a torch elsewhere, I do have a 50 foot hose reel mounted on the wall back up here. And I can take that torch pretty much anywhere I need to in the shop or outside the shop. That one will go out into the drive area. If I got something big I got to cut, I can put a cutting torch on that, take it out. It's set up on the propane side of the system right now. But really the hose fittings are easy to swap around. If I needed to weld out there with a torch for some reason, I could hook it up to the acetylene. But I can't imagine why I would need to do that. This system isn't quite done. I need to figure out a way to corral the hoses so they don't lay on the floor. I'll put some hooks up somewhere. I'm gonna to need to move some of the tools off of this wall and put up a heat shield just in case the flame points towards the wall. It shouldn't, but just to be safe, I'll do that. So when this is all set up, I will go over it in more detail, show you exactly how everything is hooked up, talk about what parts I got, talk about quick connects that I'm trying out. Talk a little bit more about the gas savers, where you can get a gas saver, show you how it all works, but I'll wait to do that after we get it all set up. And of course, that's been one of those projects that every time you work on it for a little while, you think you're going to get it done today. There is some little fitting or some little part that you don't have. And where I live, it's not easy to just go run to the store and buy one. So I usually go online, then you wait two days, the part shows up, you 
you get back to work on it and then you realize, oh, nope, I don't have this part. So we'll take a closer look at that and go over it real thoroughly once it's really all set up. But it's been one of those projects that would not have made a good video. Now, several of you have been paying attention to the weather and realize that we had a unique weather phenomenon out here yesterday that the National Weather Service referred to as a bomb cyclone. I'd never heard of a bomb cyclone before, and apparently this is one of the most severe weather events to ever hit part of the state of Colorado. But luckily in our area, it was just a little bit of rain, a little bit of wind, half inch of snow last night. It's bitter cold today and I'm really wishing I'd worn a pair of gloves or that I was working on something hot today. But I'm about to head in and there probably won't be any hot work today anyways. The folks further north and further east apparently got really hammered. There are interstate highways that, as I understand, are still closed while armies of snow plows try to get the snow off the roads and armies of tow trucks try to get all the abandoned vehicles off the road. So it was a real mess if you were in Denver or trying to fly into Denver. And as a result, if you're in Colorado and you were going to go to the Rocky Mountain Smiths demo this weekend at the Colorado School of Mines, that event has been canceled. The roads will probably be clear. Some of the people from the School of Mines that were going to do the demo were in Texas for some event last week. Their flight was canceled. It may be tomorrow or the next day before they finally get a flight up there. So that demonstration will be rescheduled. So if you're going to the School of Mines for that demo, don't bother. That also brings up something else. When we were talking about the punch that I made out of the mystery steel and the flatter out of the mystery steel, I said there was going to be a surprise coming up. Well, unfortunately, that was part of that demonstration. The metallurgy department at the School of Mines has the ability to do the analysis on this steel and tell us exactly what it is. And I was going to take a piece of this up there. They were going to do that for me as part of the demonstration. Then I could report back on exactly what it is. And I don't know if that would just be the chemical analysis and they tell you it's got this much carbon, this much manganese, this much boron, whatever it's got in it. Or if it would actually then give me a, a number and say, well, that's S5. So I was really looking forward to doing that, and I may still take some samples when they reschedule that demonstration, but that probably won't be till next fall. But in the meantime, one of you viewers out there apparently has access to some of that same equipment and said if I would mail them a piece, they would check it out. So maybe tomorrow I'll get, that, get a piece of this cut off, I'll get that put in the mail, and we will find out exactly what it is, and I really appreciate that offer. I just got to go back through the comments and find out who it was. Anyways, that's about all I've got in the shop. Unfortunately, I've got some bookkeeping to do and some tax preparation to do. I don't mind paying my taxes half as much as I mind doing the paperwork to prepare my taxes. But you got to do what you got to do, so I'm headed inside to take care of that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos. There's lots of great blacksmithing content out there. But then, by all means, try to make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.